Hey folks, I'm back again. Uh, this time I'd like to take a look at the battle group rules, the battle group rule book specifically. Uh, I don't want to get too much detail about how the game plays or anything. Just to give you an idea of what you need to play and, and a little bit of an idea of how it works. And, and look at the rule book itself. Uh, for instance, this is what's called the mini rule book. You could buy this separate from any other uh, of the books that are in the series. For instance, the Overlord and the Fall of the Reich. Uh, hardback campaign books. Uh, these don't come with rules. So that's where this little mini rule book comes in hand. Uh, and like I said, this is relatively cheap. You could pick this up in the U.S. for maybe 12, 15 bucks, eBay or local. It's not expensive, folks. Consider them what you get. Highly worth it. Uh, I believe the Battle Group Kursk campaign book actually comes with the rules. Uh, in the book. So if you're interested in Eastern Front battles, uh, you could pick up the rule book, which is a hardback, uh, with the rules in it, which is nice. Uh, otherwise, you're looking at this, the mini rule book. Now, uh, let's take a look at it. Well, first of all, it's about 60 pages, not including the pullouts. Well, they're not actually pullouts, but they're actually bound in the book. But that's okay, you can photocopy these quite easily. You got your standard play sheet, for the rules, right there, double-sided. You get the battle rating counter sheet, which you'll need to play the game. Uh, you can photocopy them as well. And a little army roster sheet of sorts where you can record your tanks and your infantry and what's in what. That's basically where you record your army. Uh, and the rest is pretty much the rules, scenarios and everything. Uh, give you an idea what the rules are like and how they're structured in this little book. Of course, it starts off like all the battle group books. They got the nice color pictures in the front, like that. It's just beautiful. Goes into the beginning here where it talks about the rules and the setting. A little bit about World War II and the battlefields. And it goes into the actual rules. Now, the rules are pretty much structured where it gives you all the basic rules for orders, movement, shooting. All the basics are up front in the beginning of the rules. In the back, You'll eventually get to the, I don't want to call them complex, but a little bit more specific rules like artillery fire. Uh, they're all in the back. The rules for morale. Uh, the battle rating system, how it works in the game. That's in the back as well. How to use the battle rating markers. Special rules for units like artillery spotter. These are like skills, you can see. So you could have a unit that might have a skill like artillery spotter. Well, what that basically means is that unit can uh, spot artillery and call in artillery on the tabletop. And you know, some units in your army might have these special abilities. Uh, like Panzer Ace, for instance. There's your Whitman right there. And it applies something like a little bonus to hit, and so on. Uh, mortar spotters, engineers, for units that can build bridges and demolish things and do engineering type tasks. You got all the rules for aircraft also in the back. And that's like, you know, that's great. So all the Flames of War players out there, be happy because you can use your, you can use your plane models in the game. Uh, so far I've played a few games and I haven't had the aircraft involved yet, but I'm actually pretty excited to see them in play. Uh, so that's nice. So you got your aircraft. They're in the back as well. Anti-aircraft fire, of course. Rules on engineering, which is only about two pages. Look at that. Uh, and then how to read the stats for vehicles and tanks, and gun profiles. And then you got your scenarios. You got attack and counterattack and flanking attack. Those are uh, meeting engagement type scenarios. <coughs> what's what's good about this game, especially these two scenarios here, is that. You don't deploy all your stuff on the board at once. Uh, basically, the only thing on the board at the start of a game is going to be your recon forces, your reconnaissance troops. They'll be deployed in, at the beginning. Uh, and later on, after the first turn, your, your actual forces will be moving onto the table. Uh, so it's a very logical, historical uh, game when it comes to scenarios. Uh, the battles flow and, and become battles in a very realistic fashion. None of this you set up, I set up, and then we go at it. 
And then you got two more scenarios. These are defensive, attack defense scenarios. You got defensive line and high ground. And in these scenarios, you'll actually have a little more troops on the table uh, besides your recon forces, obviously, because it's an attack and defense. And all the scenarios are organized where you have your victory conditions, terrain suggestions, uh, descriptions of your forces and what you can have, uh, the play of weather on the game, uh, and how you win, and so on. And there's four of those in the rule book. Uh, usually when you get a campaign book, you'll get a bunch more scenarios to go along with this. Uh, these are all generic scenarios, by the way. You can, uh, they can be used with, in any part of World War II and involving any armies. Okay, so that's pretty much how the book is structured. As far as the actual rules, I don't want to go into too much detail, but enough to say that it's an orders-based uh, game system. In other words, you randomly determine how many orders you get every turn, and that's modified by the number of officers you have in your army. And the number of orders is basically the number of units you can take actions with during a turn. And what orders you can take for a unit uh, could be anything from moving twice to firing twice, or in the case of this order, the maneuver and fire, you can move and then fire, or the reverse, fire and maneuver. Be self-explanatory. And there's other special tasks you can do as orders, like embark and disembark, an engineering task is an order. Uh, request artillery fire, that's another order. So you get the idea. You're basically going to be issuing orders to your units. And uh, keep in mind that a unit in this game is usually one vehicle, like this Panzer IV, or it's one squad, in the case of these Panzer Grenadiers, or it's one team, such as an MG team, which I don't have in front of me, but you get the idea. And uh, you basically issue orders to each and every one of them, one at a time. <clears throat> So that's basically how the game works as far as orders. Uh, there's no set sequence to events. You basically roll up your orders, uh, issue your orders, carry them out, uh, and then that's it. When you run out of orders, you're done. And the opponent takes his action. Now, one of the nice things about this game is that it's not just I go, you go. There is uh, an element of reaction moves and firing that can be made by the opponent during your orders phase, we'll call it. Uh, in other words, while I'm moving one of my tanks, he could decide to, well, I'm going to open fire with my tank over here. Well, he can do that in this game. And that's usually a result of, during his turn, issuing a reaction order, such as reaction fire or reaction move. And basically what that means is when you put a unit on reaction fire, for instance, it means that unit can interrupt the opponent by firing his gun. So that's reaction fire. Basically... A form of overwatch. And then the rest of the rule book, after orders, we go into movement. Basically all the rules for moving through the different terrain types, how far units can move, you know, infantry's like five inches off-road or on-road, and so on. Uh, and it goes into several separate chapters or sections of the book that cover different ways of firing. Uh, in this case, we've got area fire, which is highly inaccurate, but it's meant to pin an enemy unit. And pinning is very devastating in this game because it basically says, hey, look, you're pinned, you can't do nothing for the turn. You have to become unpinned, and that's done through rallying, a rally order, basically. And here's aimed fire. That's where you're actually shooting with your unit or your team uh, to kill, to cause damage, which is quite devastating. It's typically used for tanks and such when they want to take out another tank. Uh, a little description of the different weapons, like light mortars, machine guns, and their stats in the game. <clears throat> that goes name fire with explosive shells, as well as armor-piercing shells. And these usually involve artillery and uh, anti-tank guns, uh, and tanks, obviously. They'll be using a lot of this. Uh, one thing to point out at this point is that uh, with armor-piercing and high-explosive firing, usually, and this is usually the case with tanks, in fact, it's always the case with tanks, is that they have a fixed number of rounds. And before the start of a battle, you determine what the proportions are between high-explosive and armor-piercing. 
penetrating rounds. So you decide. So for instance, I might look at my Stug uh, and find out it has an ammo rating of 9. Well, before the start of the game, I proportion that 9 ammo between high explosive shells and armor piercing shells. So I might decide I'll have 5 AP and the rest are high explosive shells. And why is that important? Well, you basically keep track of ammo in this game, which is unusual uh, in today's market of game rules. You don't see that too often, but it's a bit old fashioned, really. You would think, but uh, I played it and you know what? I enjoy it very much so. It adds a certain level of sneakiness and unpredictability to the game. And believe it or not, it's not hard to keep track of that uh, during the flow of a game. I actually like it a lot. Uh, so yeah, you do keep track of things. And your opponent never really knows. That's the cool thing, how much you have in ammo to begin with. Uh, not just the proportions, but he doesn't know how much ammo you have. So that creates some unique situations with your tanks. So, yeah, that's that's a high point, I think, of this game. Keeping track of ammo, folks. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, so that's the basics of the rules. There's your rules for artillery again. Uh, and yes, you do have off-board artillery in this game, which is uh, more realistic than having it on the table. If you're accustomed to Flames of War, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. So that's the basics of the rules system. Uh, and of course, if we look at our figures here, one of the questions I get asked quite a bit is, you know, what's the basing? How does the basing work in the game? Well, it's pretty straightforward, actually. Not hard at all. You can use figures based any way you please. That's basically how it works. If you've got them mounted for Flames of War, not a problem at all. This game flows perfect with figures mounted for uh, Flames of War. Uh, the scale is one-to-one, -one, so it means each guy represents one guy. So that's if there is an issue, that would be it. It's easy to fix. Like for instance, here I got five guys on a base. Here's three more, that's nine. Uh, and if I add this guy over here on a single base, that's ten. I could use that just like this, mounted just like this in a game. Not a problem. So if you're worried about basing, don't. You can have your figures mounted like this, you can have them mounted individually, and you can have them mounted as many figures as you want on a base that make up that squad or that team or whatever. It's all a matter of taste and convenience. And when you have a base that takes casualties, it's simple enough to mark them with a little micro dice or something or placing a dice next to it to show their losses. Or I know one, one person who puts little smoke over top of one of the guys to show that he's dead. You can do that too, whatever you can think of. Not an issue. And as far as dice, well, that's simple enough. It's a D6 game, so you'll need about a half dozen D6. Uh, you'll need a dice to show direction, random directions, which you could use a D10 and use the point to show the direction randomly when you roll it. Or I could use one of these old dice that I have, or another game system that I don't use anymore, and that shows directions quite easily. Uh, and that's about it, folks. I'm not gonna, like I said, I won't get into the detail of the rules, but just give you an idea. Uh, as far as my, what I think of the game, as many of you know, I'm a, I've played a lot of Flames of War, for instance, as well as Blitzkrieg Commander 2, uh, and some other game systems. I've been Shot Mum, Chain of Command, and so on and so forth. And out of all of them, I would say this game system, uh, this fits me perfect. It's fast, smooth, battles unfold in a very realistic manner. Uh, the proportion of miniatures to table space is correct historically, in my opinion. You don't get the wall-to-wall -wall tank stuff going on in Flames of War. <clears throat> and if I was to make a direct comparison between, say, Flames of War and this game, I would say what this set of rules does is it pretty much, at least for me, I'm only speaking for myself, uh, it pretty much solves all the problems that I had playing Flames of War. Uh, this seemed, like, it, it, like for instance, it puts reaction fire in the game. That's nice. Uh, it solves the problem of, 
a total I go you go system by having the reaction moves during a turn. I like that. And it does away with all the fiddly rules that you encounter that you may encounter in Flames of War. I mean, you're not overwhelmed by all the special rules for this and the special rules for that. This is all put together in a very smooth, intuitive, uh, easy to understand way. Games flow quick and they flow realistic, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty good coming from me. Uh, so, yeah, folks, if you want to try this game, do so. It's not expensive to try, at least, and get into. Grab yourself a mini book, throw together some tank stats, and have a tank battle. If you've got miniatures already based for another game, go for it. Otherwise, I highly recommend you buy one of the campaign books with the rules, and you're set. You can't go wrong. So there you go, folks. That's my general look at the game system. I hope I answered some questions for you, gave you some idea what it's like. Uh, that's it. I don't know what else to say. It's a good game. Grab it, folks. Okay, till next time. Talk to you soon, my friends.